N. And uh, I'm representing Media Education Lab, which is an organization in Brazil that merges uh, governments, NGOs, and also companies around the media information, media literacy concerns. Uh, first of all, uh, I prepared something here. Uh, uh, you're going to watch three minutes of video, and I make a presentation really focused on the Brazilian back, uh, scenery, on the Brazilian background, what media, what media information and media education is now happening in Brazil. So I hope you like it. So I wish just to, to use three minutes for a video you not regret to watch, okay? <laughs> I hope. Well, sorry to interrupt because the video is 20 minutes, so I don't want to take all my time uh, with it. But um, let me take my presentation here. So, uh, first of all, uh, you just seen um, you just watch the movie uh, made by uh, high school students, all of it, like the acting, uh, the plot, the screenplay, the direction, the light direction, the sound direction, everything is made by students. That's what Mel in Media Education Lab is doing in Brazil, working with students to analyze and produce media. Why am I, well, I was a, a very successful journalist in, in mainstream media covering education, and I, I, I really changed my, my way of life when I decided to go to educate, to the education, to schools, to governments to work with media, to work with media literacy. That's why I need Brazilian schools, need MIL, practice and innovation. We are in a situation in Brazil that we need to change education, need to change quality of education in Brazil. I'll give some glimpse, some uh, overview about what's the situation in Brazil of education right now. And you understand why am I is, is acting this way, okay? So I separate 12 facts about uh, MIL in Brazil. So it's very important to know each one of these. First, there are only a few public policies on MIL, mainly regarding to activities in school. So we're beginning to develop policies on the area. There's no mass media regulation from the federal or local government. I mean, almost no one. Uh, in Brazil, we spent 20 years on dictatorial uh, government, so sometimes media regulation is read like censorship, which is not the same thing. Media regulation, in my point of view, is another thing. And we are starting to discuss media regulation right now, the Congress. Three, uh, 
that's a good news. An important chapter of internet regulation was approved by the parliament in 2014. So last year, we have a zero milestone from internet in Brazil to start to regulate the access and this kind of thing. But not censorship, just regulate that internet could be and should be a free place for free expression. Four, there are more mobile phones than people in Brazil. This is a very important thing. So uh, it, it, it means for me opportunity. And nothing more than this, opportunity to learn with it, okay? Five, public education system has reached universal, universality only last decade. So we have 45 million students in more than 150,000 public schools. This is the dimension of the network of public schools in Brazil. It's huge, okay? Uh, despite of it, we have universality in access, but 30% of the students drop out before graduating from public schools. This is the problem. It's not more the access, but the lack of interest of the students to finish their study. They are dropping out. So according to Fundação Getúlio Vargas uh, from Rio, uh, one research they did, the first reason of dropping out is lack of interest of the students to the school. What means the school is a different world, completely different from the youth world, for the world where the students are 24 hours a day. So eight, professionals don't find teachers' career attractive because of the salaries. So if you go to a university to study physics or chemistry, you go to the, to the private companies. You don't go teaching. Okay? Nine, universities don't have an appropriate curriculum for training teachers and don't stimulate innovation. Uh, the University of Education in Brazil, it's almost like archaeology. Uh, I mean, uh, they are looking for the past and not looking for the future. Uh, and education is looking for the future. It's a very weird situation. You are, you are educating people looking for the future, of course, with your roots in the past, but you're with your antenna in the future. And sometimes if you don't have your antenna, your parabolic in the future, just look for the past, you don't innovate. And universities in Brazil need innovation of curriculum. Tenth, federal gov government don't spend money or innovation edu uh, on education. This is not a word for the Minister of Education of Brazil. Okay? Eleven, private schooling represents only 11% of the kids and the youngsters. So 90% of the 45 million people in school are on public schools in Brazil. Okay? Eleventh, media literacy and information literacy operate in separate words since graduation, okay? That's why your, represent, uh, your UNESCO representative here in Egypt said uh, yesterday, well, I really identify myself with it. We need to make a soft conversion of the areas because we work in separate areas in Brazil. They don't dialogue. Uh, libraries have their own policies and schools that have their own, and media have their own policy, okay? So uh, Media Education Lab, what we are doing, we are a social enterprise that believes the power of the network to connect students, teachers, companies, government, and social organizations to transform education in a creative way. Uh, we, be, we believe that MIL is about creative with youngsters. They need to create, to develop their own products of media. Uh, I will just run a little bit to not spend time. So this is our network in Brazil. We work with schools, with media, with the government, with companies, with universities, and with NGO. And we try to develop programs in schools, inside schools, inside universities, inside even companies and governments, working with all those stakeholders. Okay, all those stakeholders are compromised to media information literacy on our programs on this. But also, we are a free and remote lab open to debates, research, and project developments. So this is our lab. We have a physical lab where people can go and make MIL projects, but we also operate and develop remote labs. What I mean, labs inside companies, labs inside schools. We believe that it's a way to stimulate innovation and transformation in the school. Because uh, do you know, I don't know if you know the Fab Lab movements or the, the Fab Lab movement, uh, it's a movement that you create like a lab but not a chemistry lab or a biology lab. You create a, like a, a garage, a space of creation, a space of creativity with tools, with internet, 
with physical tools, uh, with internet, with robotics, with other things. So we developed this kind of environment for the students to go there and develop the, their media projects inside this kind of fab labs, we call. If you go to fablab.com on the internet, you're going to check out all of the world. Uh, it's a strong movement around the world, okay? So our guidelines, what I believe is public education needs to observe from the private uh, sector in Brazil is to customize and blend the learning, to make online, to use more online tools and offline tools, make project-based learning. When you, when you develop a website and develop an app or a documentary, you, you're creating a project, not more separate the areas by the, uh, the curriculum areas and isolate them, but you work with all of them together. Network, experimentations, teacher training, we are very absent of this in Brazil, uh, focus on, on media information literacy. And our communica communication for us is a value and an essential skill. And what I believe most on MIL is the publication. Okay? All this video you, you watch uh, is running a lot of festivals, a lot of, of concourse around, around the world. Uh, contests around the world, sorry, uh, running for awards and everything. The students need to have the proactivity to develop and release their progress on the, on the society, release on the community. That's where we work really hard. Uh, we, have, uh, we are working 15 projects right now, some successful experience. Uh, since, since 2001, for example, uh, students have created more than 10 magazines, three movies. Uh, sorry, it's not three, it's 30. The, missing the old 30 movies <laughs> and other communication problems with uh, MIL experience. Four universities uh, are using this model as I ML, as I ML case in Brazil. I released this book, uh, Idade Media, which means Media Age, I released uh, two years ago, and four universities are using this methodology to, to develop MIL projects. Okay? This is another successful experience. Look how simple it is and what's the difference it can make. Uma pergunta rara. I will translate for you what does it mean. It means uh, an, 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 an unexpected or unusual, unusual question. What's an unusual question? We ask, we ask the students, what do we want to change in your school? This is an unusual question for the student. We used to ask this for police make, public policy makers, for teachers, for directors, for even for parents, but not for the kids and young. So we develop a methodology based on what do you want to change into, how do you want to improve your education in your school? And we develop a methodology with this book, is open online, okay, it's free open online, unfortunately just in Portuguese, uh, in nine public schools uh, in our neighborhood. Uh, so I'll jump this. Uh, this is the third item is quite important. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, Galileo magazine, which is a science magazine. And all the products, the media products released by students are published on the website of Galileo magazine. And it's more than two million views on the website in a month. Because Galileo magazine is a huge science magazine published in Brazil. So we have this partnership to, to publicize the, the, the products of the youngsters, you know, to, to put them on the pipeline, okay? So uh, I, had, I could talk to you the whole week without stopping, but <laughs> I, need to <laughs> I need to stop. I hope uh, I have my time. I didn't, oh, this is my contact, you know, Alexandria at mediaeducationlab.com.br, and please check out the website, mediaeducationlab.com.br. So our model is we create lab models to become public policies. And this is the reason I, get, I gave you some glimpse at the beginning of the presentation. So thank you, and that's it. حقائق متعلقة بالممارسات والمستحدثات في مجال التربية الإعلامية في البرازيل من الحقائق المثيرة اللي هو أثرها أن ما فيش مقررات للتربية الإعلامية في الجامعات ودي برضو حقيقة مثيرة جدا قدم لنا مجموعة من الإرشادات في مجال التربية الإعلامية لإحداث التغيير في المدارس والجامعات طبعا هو بيوجهها لصانعي القرار بشكره على هذا العرض المتميز ونبدأ التجربة الثانية التجربة الثانية هتكون عندنا من أسبانيا ماريو جوزي موجودة معنا 
Please present yourself. All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Maria Jose Racudé. I am a professor at the Autonomous University of Barcelona, like my colleague Jose Manuel Perez Tornero. And I work at the Department of uh, Journalism and Communication Sciences. So uh, today I will try to explain to you which is the media education curricular implementation uh, in Spain. And uh, the, the topics that I will try to go to explain just a, a bit a little because it's an abstract are all these the, that you have in the in the slide so the the first question is uh, to talk you a um, few seconds about emedus project simply because uh, emedus project is an investigation that the research that um, uh, the most part of the data that i will present you are from this research Emedus um, is an implementation of media literacy uh, in 27 European countries and it uh, studies formal education, informal and non-formal education and the inclusion of disadvantages groups in media education. Uh, what uh, we have uh, studied of, of each county, of each of these 27 countries. Um, the first question is that uh, we tried to, to study the inclusion of media education in national curricula. Also an analysis of media education teachers training that we think it's very important to include media education in at schools. And the identification of uh, suitable instruments to measure media education skills and levels uh, in schools. Um, that's uh, some data about Spain. Uh, I suppose that more or less you know uh, the, what's uh, the country. Here I simply want you to, to, to talk what I think that are the two most important things for this uh, presentation. Uh, the first one is that uh, Spain is a member of the European Union. That's important because this determines many of the laws that uh, the country must fulfill. And also suppose that university studies are in the context of the European higher education area. And that's something very important for mobility of students and, and teachers. And the other important issue is that uh, there are three historical nations in Spain, Catalonia, Galicia, and the Basque Country. And this is very important for education and for media education because they have their own language and education skills themselves. Uh, that's simply a map of, uh, as you say, the, of uh, Spain. Uh, I put that because this is the uh, political administration of, of our country. And uh, that in, here you can show the, the different uh, places. But uh, the, the most important is that the Ministry of Education establishes a, a basic curriculum for uh, compulsory uh, education. It's, a, it's um, primary and secondary, which is shared by all the autonomous uh, communities. All the, um, these uh, uh, draws that you, the picture you see, oh, in one of uh, each one is a, a different autonomous community. And uh, this curriculum of the Minister of the Ministry of the Education represents the 65% of the total study program, except in the regions which have another official language, apart from Spanish, that, uh, that simply occupies 55%. And um, the other question is that the regional education authorities in each autonomous community develop the rest of the curriculum according to the local preferences and uh, characteristics. Um, I'm sorry because uh, this slide is not uh, very good, but um, uh, in brief, in short, uh, simply uh, this, uh, this slide represents the structure of the national education system existing nowadays. That means that compulsory education spans a period of 10 years 
uh, ages 6 to 16 uh, years old, which is divided in two stages, uh, primary education, which lasts six years, and secondary education, which uh, the name is ESO, that lasts uh, four years. And after the final year of the ESO, the secondary uh, uh, education, uh, there are two more years of senior secondary school. Uh, these are elective. Uh, it's uh, 16 to 18 years old, and that's known as baccalaureate. It's two years. Uh, people can stop study there, but this is the usual way to continue the university studies. Or you can make an intermediate level vocational training, which varies in length uh, depending on the chosen field and it can continue with higher, um, higher vocational training too. Um, here you can uh, show some um, data uh, there are from the National Statistic Institute of Spain. And uh, in Spain we have a population about 46 and a half million inhabitants. But uh, as you see, there are only 8 million children and young people who follow the compulsory and voluntary education to 18 years. Uh, well, that reveals simply that the birth rate is very low in Spain, but that's the, another problem uh, of inverted pyramid that it's not the, the subject of, uh, of this conference. But in uh, any case, it's very important because when um, we think on media education and we think on media literacy and um, information literacy, it's an on not only to think about children, but it's important to think um, on long life learning, I mean, for old people. Well, um, in Spain, there have been uh, movements and projects aimed uh, in media literacy since uh, 1960. Uh, however, these actions have generally been uncoordinated, uh, which uh, in is keeping with the development of media literacy uh, of, uh, uh, in, in respect of the rest of uh, Western Europe. Uh, it's important to remember that in 1960, Spain was governed by a, dictator, a dictatorial government, a dictatorial regime that kept us away from Europe in several areas and um, including the educational progress. So in 1960, some educational institutions began to use the media as a teaching tool in the classroom, but the first uh, media used were films. And uh, this uh, uh, led to creation of clubs where these films were discussed. And it was important because it was a way to promote a critical thinking in a country where the critical thinking was completely forbidden. And in 1917, the general education law promoted uh, the use of the media in schools, but only in a very pragmatic way. I mean that uh, it was an instrumental way as a tool to support formal education. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, media education began its presence in the curriculum of uh, Spanish education with the uh, introduction of the organic law of education system in 1990. Later, we have another law, the organic education law of uh, 2006, brought together the key elements of education and the media. And uh, that ensures the presence of the subject in the education content, uh, of course, in various fields. Um, even if uh, there are uh, no explicit mentions or a separate subject, really there were elements strictly related to media education in, in uh, a lot of uh, subjects of the, of the law. And um, uh, I think that one of the main, uh, not only me, uh, but uh, the, one of the most important problems of the education system in Spain is that we change too much uh, the laws. I mean that uh, each party which is uh, governing Spain decided to promote each own education law and that uh, determines that we have a lot of problems in, uh, in this way. So, uh, as you can see in this slide, we have another new general education law in Spain. This one must enter in for, into force this year, but uh, almost in Catalonia, for example, it doesn't happen. It's a question of a political uh, uh, questions, complications, um, really. 
And this law, which is called the law for the improvement of education quality, will develop courses on audiovisual culture, and as well as an a specialized subject on information and communication technologies aiming both technical and intellectual skills. Um, LAMFE does not make explicit mentions to media literacy but really develops concepts uh, related to it. It doesn't exist in a specific plan on media education uh, but in uh, 2009 it was created a national program on information and communication technologies which is called School 2.0. Uh, who are the actors of all the media literacy and, uh, in Spain? Well, uh, the, the, the main problem is that Spain has no media education agency or department for media education or on film education. But uh, it uh, does have an ICT specialized department for education, which is called INTEF. Uh, INTEF is National Institute for Education Technology and Teachers Education. And this, is the, this institute is uh, quite important. That's the website of the INTEF. And it's important because um, it develops several campaigns regarding the use of the new technologies and works for the imp implementation at schools. And uh, it also gives uh, teachers training and offers online training for different audiences. Um, because of the political organization, as you, I show you in the, in the, in the map of Spain, um, the regional regular, regulatory authorities are of great importance. But it's true that not all the autonomous, uh, autonomous communities in Spain have an audiovisual council. And in some cases, the existing one uh, disappeared or were, were closed because of problems of uh, financial, uh, financial problems. And these agencies uh, have not only provided regulation and worked for the protection of audiences, they have also run several projects aiming at empowering citizens and boosting participation, access, better usages, education, and protection. Uh, we have two, um, two um, uh, special um, audiovisual council which are quite important. One of them is the Catalonian one, the audiovisual council of Catalonia. Uh, the Catalonian, the CAC, has established regular publications. We have uh, the CAC's journal, it's called Quadern del CAC, where researchers continuously publish papers on communication and audiovisuals. And the other one is the Audiovisual Council of Andalusia, which is doing more or less the, the same things. Um, about the, the media literacy and the national curricula, well, the question is that the basic competencies of the contents of primary and secondary education, uh, data processing and digital competency, uh, were included, uh, which focuses on acquiring skills in order to seek, obtain, process, and communicate information. So that means information literacy is uh, quite protect uh, in the in the curriculum, but. Uh, um, that's, um, I'm, I'm sorry for the slide, but that uh, means the, the level primary and secondary. And these are the different subjects that um, are taught uh, at schools. And so, which are, um, um, that means that uh, they, in, in these subjects, uh, students and pupils must have, uh, must acquire several activities like communication abilities in Spanish or other languages visual, musical, audiovisual, and artistic expression, ICT as a fundamental element on a social and cultural level, message reception analysis, information seeking, assessment of retrieved data, recognizing and understanding information, and, and so on. So um, in primary and secondary uh, education levels, ICT is considered a very important competency which is included in all subjects of the study program. And the reasons uh, to this inclusion, inclusion of uh, information and communication technologies can be summarized in uh, this, uh, what you see in the, in the slide. I mean that 
schools have adequate equ equipment with laptops, with good broadband connection, although teacher and student uh, confidence in new technologies is below the European average. That's very curious, but it's like that. Uh, another question is that most schools have an ICT coordinator to help in the implementation of new technologies within the teaching and learning context. Uh, most teachers seem to have received training in ICT and this is reflected in the frequent use of the new technologies in their teaching practices. And the last one is the INTEF, the organization uh, I told you uh, just a minute. Uh, organizes uh, courses, conferences, seminars, and has a new web called EducaLab. EducaLab is like a laboratory for education that provides resources for teachers and encourages collaboration on projects such as um, several things that it's called LEAR.es, it's read, um, uh, tweeting, pro-common, pro etc. Uh, one uh, of the other problems that uh, we have is that um, um, about the tools to measure the level of, of uh, competencies. The, the question is that in Spain we have no evaluation, evaluation systems in the acquisition of media skills uh, and so it's quite complicated to know if the things that we are doing at schools are correct or not, uh, have, the, um, have obtained what we wanted really or, or not. But uh, it's uh, certain that uh, local